We'll get started. Uh, welcome everybody to our CRIMSI local implementation model webinar today. So we're going to be focusing in on Lasso Decision 1B today. Um, if you would go ahead and change your name um, in your in the participant section to include the name of your LEA or your campus, just so we have an idea of who is here with us today. You can see the instructions on the screen to do that. Oops. And as we get started, I just want to introduce myself. So I'm Valerie Barron. I'm a partner with TNTP. Uh, TNTP has partnered with TEA to implement CRIMSI programs. And um, I'm based in Austin, Texas. I grew up here in Texas, went to school in Texas, um, was a former middle school science teacher and coach in Austin. Um, and I have, I oversee the CRIMSI program for TNTP and have been serving also as a CRIMSI district strategy advisor. In our time today, we're really focusing in, as I said, on the local implementation model. Uh, we wanna learn and understand the purpose, components and benefits of that model. Um, explore the roles and responsibilities that are aligned with that model and give you all an opportunity to kind of evaluate whether or not the local implementation model is a good fit for your district and then um, to find some essential next steps. Let's dive right into our purpose. So as we know, COVID-19 erased years of improvement in both math and reading for Texas students with especially steep declines in math. And we have seen a little bit of a rebound in STAR results with the efforts that people have put in place so far. We know that we still have further to go and that makes it even more important that we stay the course and focus in on student, accelerating student learning through um, our initiatives. So TEA has really developed this learning acceleration framework to um, focus on catching kids up. And that includes um, supporting teachers, supporting the use of rigorous instructional materials and providing more time for the students in need. So today we're really focusing in on that supporting of teachers and rigorous instructional materials. The materials that we are focusing on with CRIMSI are K-5 uh, high quality instructional materials. So at the elementary level, we're providing um, access to Amplify Texas Elementary Literacy Program and Eureka Math, both available in English and Spanish. I want to just emphasize that the Amplify Texas Spanish version does include the K-2 Abilidades y Distresas component, which was developed and introduced for the first time in the 22-23 school year. And that is now just a complete part of the materials that are available. So any LEAs that are implementing these core products are eligible to apply for LASSO Decision 1 funding, whether that is Decision 1A, 1B, or 1C. So these three options, 1A, 1B, and 1C, give a quick overview of all three of them. So CRIMSI is just 1A, provides that professional learning directly to teachers, coaches, and administrators through asynchronous modules and some live virtual uh, communities of practice. CRIMSI local implementation is more of a train the trainers approach, and that provides professional learning directly to coaches and administrators through asynchronous modules, as well as live virtual communities of practice in a training of trainers module. So then that is then turnkeyed to teachers um, led by district staff. And then we have 1C, which is the ESD Strong Foundations Implementation Supports. That is providing professional learning directly to teachers, coaches, and administrators through fully asynchronous models, but also live virtual in-person job embedded supports, and that is provided from education service centers. With the local implementation model, we have all of the same focus of all three of those um, models, which is on accelerating learning for students, providing the opportunity to implement high quality instructional materials and delivering professional learning and other supports to, to support that successful implementation. The CRIMSI local implementation model really provides further opportunity to build internal capacity so that you're able to flexibly develop teachers, 
and to support and sustain successful implementation. So this is a way that you can take a lot more agency over um, how the training is, is applied, especially at the classroom level. Um, I wanna give you kind of an idea of some of the essential pilot roles. We'll get into more details on these later, uh, but want you to kind of have these in mind as we go through the, the specific components of the model. So at the district level, we have roles that are existing in the district, such as superintendent, chief academic officer, chief school officer or principal managers. Those are key leaders who need to be involved in the pilot because they really support the, the practices and policies that allow um, high quality implementation of uh, materials. In addition to that, there are some pilot specific roles. So an initiative lead to lead the entire pilot and be a, a main contact for CRIMSI. Registration leads to ensure that participants get registered quickly and can start accessing resources in the program. And then product leads, if you have a large pilot or large district and you're piloting multiple products, having a product lead who is very specific to that content area can be a great choice um, for ensuring um, that teachers and coaches are getting the support that they need. At the school level, you may also need registration leads if you have large campuses or multiple campuses, uh, but all school leaders and coaches are critical participants at that level. And then obviously at the classroom level, teachers and students. So kind of keep in mind that you're going to be identifying some key people in your district to support all of the various components uh, of this uh, model. The CRIMSI local implementation components include uh, pre-implementation planning and ongoing implementation and progress monitoring. We'll get into the, the details of that in a moment. Also high quality professional learning that is provided directly to leaders and to coaches, and then they are re-delivering that training locally to, um, to teachers. There are also communities of practice that are across all LASSO programs for senior district leaders, and those will take place monthly. As part of local implementation, stipends are available as an incentive for participation for coaches. So let's get into the details of that professional learning and development that is provided in this model. Um, so the district implementation teams have access to a variety of supports. We start off by using readiness and progress assessments to get an idea of where a district is so that we can meet you where you are and help support with kind of differentiated supports. The differentiated supports might come in the form of your dedicated advisor, who can ask individualized questions. They come in the form of one-on-one -on -one consultations, which are periodic or also can be on demand, uh, but also have some opportunities in a cohort where you may work with other districts that are similar and participation in high quality professional learning. That high quality professional learning is rooted in adult learning theory, involves a variety of different approaches together. So a lot of the content is provided through interactive modules. Um, those are primarily asynchronous digital modules, but also we have some that are blended where there's a live component and an asynchronous component. Um, in addition to that, um, virtual live communities of practice allow for interaction with peers in the same role in the smaller groups so they can really um, engage in problems of practice and learn from others. Alongside those two critical professional learning components are cycles of continuous improvement where leaders will engage and also the flexible consultations um, to get individualized support. The professional learning modules are really that core of learning in CRIMSI. These modules are available, they're kind of the backbone of all of our LASSO Decision One programs. So no matter which one you choose, you're going to have access to these modules. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a list of the main topics that are included in all models, no matter what the role. If for teachers and coaches, we go into much more detail uh, at the classroom level of how to implement these things, um, but everyone kind of gets a taste of how the products are kind of aligned with these different components. They also build understanding and usage of key protocols. So 
one of our theories of how we, we get to quality implementation of high quality instructional materials is through the use of protocols that really build those effective habits. And so those protocols are unit and module internalization, lesson internalization, lesson rehearsal, and student work analysis. And, and those will come up again and again throughout the professional learning program. We go into a little more detail on these protocols. So unit and module internalization and lesson internalization, these are really focused on helping teachers prepare for instruction. So these protocols support them in understanding the actual units and lessons that they will teach. It, it's a process that can start off simple and can get more and more uh, nuanced as teachers become more and more familiar with the materials. Um, and it's really about understanding the connection to the TEKS, the connection to prior learning, uh, completing tasks as a student, really understanding what it is that they are going to be teaching. Lesson rehearsal kind of builds on that. So lesson rehearsal is an opportunity to practice key moments before getting into the classroom. So it's a facilitated process where teachers will identify a key learning moment and then practice and, and get feedback as though they're in the classroom. So they get feedback before they deliver to the students so that ultimately that first time they teach is their best um, and not that they're experimenting on their students for the first time. And finally, we have the student work analysis protocol. And so that is really about understanding not only the work that students have produced, but the actual tasks that we're asking students to do. So in high quality instructional materials, we have complex tasks that often require students to share their thinking. Um, and there's sort of a nuanced way of analyzing those tasks that goes beyond just looking at uh, quantitative data to really understanding what the task is asking, how it's aligned and how students are responding. These protocols have been developed and kind of revised over the past couple of years. And we're at a, a stage where we've incorporated a lot of feedback from users into them. The protocols include a teacher version and a coach version. So the teacher version is um, includes shorter, simpler, what we call sticky uh, elements to it so that it's easy for teachers to digest and, and use right away. These components include the same like four sections across all the products. So if teachers are, and uh, coaches and leaders are working with multiple products, you'll see the same sort of general approach to using the protocols. At the same time, there are details in each of the protocols that are specific to the product. So you're looking at at conceptually how we're preparing, but then there's also the specifics um, that really align with each one. For each one, there's also a more in-depth coach guide. So that coach guide supports coaches and leaders to be able to introduce protocols to teachers, to make decisions about how to choose, like where to spend time in the protocols, and um, also some guidance on going deeper. So if the teacher protocol is kind of the, the basic that can be done in a a typical planning period, then coaches have additional guidance for where they might be able to spend more time or where they might um, be able to advance beyond the basics once teachers kind of get, um, get into the habit of using the protocols. Um, and next we're gonna talk about our local implementation assurances. So the assurances, really are about making a commitment to the success of the initiative. The Strong Foundations Implementation supports the require this commitment to district and school level assurances. And the purpose of these is really to ensure that we have the enabling conditions for effective HQIM implementation. So these assurances, like looking at the assurances will kind of allow districts to think about their readiness for implementing HQIM and also just ensure that um, they're able to follow along with everything that um, is included in the pilot. So first we have some implementation assurances that are related to the people. So we need first and foremost to have approval in the larger system. So understanding um, this sort of vertical spine of support for the initiative where the superintendent and chief academic officer or equivalent leader are um, able to commit to uh, participating in the pilot. In some cases, you may need to seek school board approval for that as well. We always encourage in including the school board 
so that they are involved in, in your pilot. We also require the appointment of an initiative lead. So at least one person who can serve as the primary point of contact for the pilot throughout. In addition, participation of at least one school leader per participating campus. Um, we'd like to encourage and recommend that that person is the principal, but in larger systems or schools and with, depending on the size of the pilot, it may be appropriate to have a different um, campus leaders act as the school leader. Um, and then we also require at least participation of at least one coach per product. If you have a larger pilot, we really encourage you to have more coaches involved, um, but at least one for each of the products. In addition, there are some uh, assurances about engaging in participation. So submitting registration information on time so that we can get people enrolled in the pilot submitting required data, which might include student data, as well as um, information about the district, ensuring digital access and rostering, if you're using rostering for the products, and ensuring print access. I wanna call out here an important distinction for the local implementation model, is that in this model, districts are responsible for securing their own access to print materials. So we will support you to get digital access, um, and can advise you on um, things related to print, but you will be responsible for your own print. You'll also be responsible for ensuring that all of your participants are completing their role specific assurances. So are participating in learning, are completing uh, feedback surveys, are submitting the data that they are required to do. Um, and another important distinction here is that in this model, teachers are not directly participating in CRIMSI only leaders and coaches are, um, and districts are taking crimson materials and turnkeying that to flexibly support teachers in the ways that fit with your own uh, priorities. In addition to all of this, there are lasso communities of practice for senior district leaders, and those happen monthly as also a requirement. There are finally assurances that relate to the products themselves. So this is a commitment to following the scope and sequence for the product you've chosen, meeting the minimum number of instructional minutes, using the assessments that are present in the materials, um, arranging schedules and availability so that participants can participate in all the required CRIMSI learning, and ensuring that teachers have that time to actually prepare for instruction and use those protocols that I mentioned before. Um, an important part of our programs is the stipend, which we provide as an incentive for participation. Uh, there are some requirements to uh, earn that stipend for coaches. So participation in professional learning, about 24 seat hours of high quality professional learning, uh, including those modules as well as the communities of practice. Providing feedback, there are five uh, surveys that teachers or that coaches will provide feedback on throughout the year. And then finally, submission of reflections on protocols. So we expect that coaches are working with teachers using the protocols we introduce, and then we're collecting data on um, how that implementation is going. So we use feedback from all of these components to continuously improve uh, our, our pilots. Uh, in addition to the stipend, which is 1500 per product uh, for up to two products. Um, coaches will also receive a certificate of CPE hours, and that will be given at the end of the school year. So stipend payments, a uh, partial stipend payment would happen in December and the remainder in June, and then CPE hours come in June. Uh, one other little distinction I wanna make here is um, Coaches will receive a, or can work toward a stipend for up to two products. So that might mean an Amplify product and Eureka, or it might mean Amplify K2 and Amplify 3.5, which are different enough to be considered separate products. There is not a consideration for working at different grade levels other than that K2, 3.5 distinction for Amplify. So if a coach is just working with Eureka, that's just one product. All right, I wanna get into a little bit of the timeline and what you can expect as part of this program. 
So this is kind of an overview of where uh, certain things and milestones in the program take place over the course of the school year. I'm going to dive into each one of these and give you a little taste of um, what you can expect. So starting off with registration and orientation. So we'll begin in March after the LASA application pro process has concluded. Uh, and at that time, we're working with district implementation teams. So those teams will attend a live orientation that's for initiative lead and key district implementation team members, a 45 minute pre-pilot consultation, which is where um, the CRIMSI team will work with individual districts to identify their readiness and help them prepare to get systems in place for those enabling conditions for the pilot. And then we'll also um, collect initial registration information to identify how many leaders and coaches uh, will be participating in the pilot. During this early time from March through July, this is pre-implementation planning. So we'll be working with district teams uh, during this period to ensure that those conditions for success are in place. We'll work with um, data from our readiness assessment to provide those differentiated supports during this period to make sure that you're really set up for success. Also throughout the year, um, those one-on-one -on -one consultations that I mentioned will happen. There are two critical periods where there are required consultations. So in the June and July uh, time, there is a beginning of pilot consultation that's really focused on that readiness to begin implementation. And then at the midpoint of the pilot, uh, there will be a consultation. But flexible consultations are available throughout the year. So uh, they can be scheduled at any time with their individual CRIMSI advisor. And, um, and are really designed to provide that one-on-one -on -one support for specific implementation uh, challenges. Um, leaders uh, at both the district and the school level will also participate in four progress check-ins. So each one of these times will be um, an opportunity to come together collaboratively. So with um, other districts and other school leaders, to uh, check on progress, look at data, and um, have an opportunity to engage in some uh, problems of practice, but also hear from the successes and challenges of others. And those will take place kind of quarterly, uh, spread out throughout the year at key points. Back to thinking about um, our training. So the professional learning is provided, there is first this onboarding phase. So when we think about school leaders and coaches, coming into this onboarding phase in the period from April to August. During that time, um, they will participate in a live orientation to the pilot, so to understand like what is all available. And live orientation to the actual product, so an introduction to that product. And then four live virtual sessions that are available that target uh, key topics for leaders and coaches. So Leaders are really focusing on that district and campus level systems and change management throughout their four sessions, whereas coaches are digging into their very specific product and learning those initial protocols. So they're kind of establishing this baseline of how do we use these protocols to uh, prepare for instruction. All of these are going to be delivered multiple times so that people can access them live and get that um, kind of interactive support. But at the same time, they're all available asynchronously. So if the live version does not uh, fit with your schedule, we do have the asynchronous version available. So the goal is everybody before they start using the product is really participating in this onboarding series. Then we have ongoing professional learning. Um, so the ongoing professional learning is for coaches. Coaches will participate in six learning modules, which are asynchronous. They'll submit exit tickets for those um, to reflect on their completion. And then alongside those, they will attend six live communities of practice groups. So these are groups of about 15 coaches who are working maybe within their own district, maybe across districts to apply the learning from each module. So really thinking about like, how do we work through the problems or challenges and um, also have an opportunity to share successes with their peers. 
We also throughout this time will have some additional asynchronous modules that are available. Those are totally optional, but they'll be on a variety of topics that we've identified as important for implementation. Um, and so people can access them throughout the year as they see the need. And finally, um, in terms of communities of practice and learning, uh, that senior leader communities of practice that will meet monthly starting in about April. And um, that will be for your superintendents and CAOs, chief school officers level of, um, of staff. In addition to the learning, we have opportunities to collect data. So TEA uses this data for continuous improvement efforts related to both the actual products and also um, implementation so that we can all work together to help uh, successfully or spread successful implementation across the state. So leaders will submit uh, five surveys throughout the year, it takes about 15 minutes for each one, and thus really feedback on, on their learning, feedback on the product, feedback on their experience. Coaches will also submit those feedback surveys, but in addition to those, coaches will be leading teachers through the use of the protocols and will submit some uh, reflections on the use of those protocols that help us to better understand how they're being used, what the challenges might be with them. And then coaches will also conduct one, at least one observation in the fall and one in the spring that they will submit um, so that we can get an idea of what's going on in the classroom. Before we wrap up this part, I want to just uh, identify some key differences between Crimsey and Crimsey local implementation to make sure that's all clear to everybody. So Crimsey, which is the 1A decision, I think that this is the biggest difference between the two of them is that in Crimsey 1A, everything is provided from Crimsey directly to participants, both coaches, leaders, and also directly to teachers. In local implementation, <clears throat> that is provided directly to coaches and leaders who then turn key materials and resources to support teachers. So the local implementation is designed as a training of trainers. So in addition to receiving the content understanding and support directly, also receive a train the trainer uh, materials and support to turn key those materials to teachers. <clears throat> that includes both access to the same asynchronous modules that teachers in Crimsey 1A have access to. Each district in local implementation gets their own TEA Learn courses, so they have control over when and how teachers are accessing those modules, um, but also have access to um, the sort of facilitator guides for the live sessions and can determine how to use the components of those live sessions with those materials. Some other uh, key differences I wanna highlight or similarities and differences, um, the pre-implementation planning supports in both Crimsey and local implementation, you get the pre-implementation planning supports, self-paced modules, virtual communities of practice and uh, progress monitoring supports. The biggest differences again, being that teachers are not direct participants. The other important differences are with print materials and stipends. So print materials, again, with Crimsey, the print materials are included with Crimsey local implementation. The uh, district is responsible for that print access. And then with stipends in Crimsey 1A, teachers and coaches as direct participants are eligible for stipends in Crimsey local Im implementation. It's only for coaches. Uh, let's get into a little bit about what you need to think about if you are participating in the Crimsey local implementation model and specifically thinking about those roles that I introduced at the beginning of our time together. So the initiative lead role is really um, the person who drives impact by facilitating the whole thing. So this is really the, the key leader who um, is managing the fidelity of implementation of the selected products. It involves some logistical elements, but most importantly, it's really establishing this culture of joy, a positive culture for the pilot, communicating effectively about why the district is participating in the pilot, working with others in the district to establish those conditions for successful implementation, and making sure that really the systems are in place and that um, 
participants in the pilot are supported. Then a key role is registration lead. This might be the same person as the initiative lead, or it might be a different person depending on your district structure. The registration leaders are really just responsible for ensuring that all the appropriate staff members are registered for the pilot. So making sure that we have people's correct names, email addresses, all of this stuff is really important to ensure that we can get people access right away and that they are getting credit for everything that they are participating in. So this, this person is really responsible for ensuring that all of that information is correct and done uh, in a timely manner. And then, as I mentioned before, in a larger pilot or when piloting multiple products, you may want to identify a product lead role. So someone who can really focus in on that content area, who would monitor participation of coaches. And in the implementation model, I think this role is really critical because this role is most likely to be supporting coaches as they're working with teachers in that particular content area. So really thinking about how are they ensuring that the learning is being turnkeyed to the teachers in local implementation. In addition to the initiative leads and those key roles, really the, everybody is involved in, uh, in some way in supporting uh, implementation of um, high quality materials. It's important to consider uh, which departments may need to be involved. Um, even thinking about uh, technology and the ability to receive emails that we send, ensuring that um, school building officials really understand what's going on with the pilot and what they should be looking for, making sure that coaches are able to um, have the capacity to support, observe, and work with teachers. Um, and then making sure that you've identified which teachers are going to participate. So that is all of the roles um, that will participate in this pilot. And this is one of the areas where your CRIMSI advisor would really work with you to identify based on your structure and your context, who are the right people to get involved um, to ensure success. Um, okay, finally, we have the last little application. So if you're interested in uh, participating in, as a CRIMSI local implementation model, participant um, or with one of the other models. The application is now open. Um, there is, was a unique application link that was emailed to the superintendent. So that is how you will access it. It is due December 22nd. We do have uh, webinars and office hours throughout this week. Um, and there's also opportunities to email with questions either to Strong Foundations or the Lasso email. We'll also be producing FAQs. So if questions come up on this call, uh, we'll be producing FAQs and sharing them publicly so you can access them. All right, that is it. So now we have an opportunity, if anyone has questions, um, that we may be able to answer them. Um, and if not, then 